everybody, for this video, I wanted to address not only the faculty and teachers, but also create something that would be useful for students. And what we're going to focus on is how to create an interesting discussion post. Now, I have some examples here on this page, both good and bad, and I wanted to walk through what you can do to really make your discussion post jump out. Now, as I scroll down, this is just boilerplate text. In my time teaching, I've seen probably tens of thousands of discussion posts, and a lot of them look like this. Now the content is king, so you want to get your thoughts and develop your thoughts and present them in a way that's concise but also comprehensive. That's the most important thing. So there's no problem with really having text on a page, but I just want to take that a step farther. How can we take this content and present it in a way that's engaging to our audience, whether it's our teacher or whether you're a teacher that's writing a discussion response to your students? So again, I've facilitated thousands of discussions and I've read tens of thousands of responses and a lot of them look like this. Maybe you have some of your thoughts in sections and that's always a good idea. Make it easy for your readers to actually get through your content as much as possible. But let me show you a different approach. So the same content that you have on here, I'm gonna present it and dress it up in a different way. And here's what I came up with. And this isn't the only way that you could do this. So I put an interesting background color and those sections I put into headings and I put some art that's floating to the right. And then I went and embedded some elements. So I created some content in Padlet and then embedded the Padlet onto the page. And this can be an interesting interaction. It could be a really interesting way to partition the content in your discussion post. And then I also look for something else that I could do. And so I have this interaction right here that I did on ThingLink and it's interactive and in that I can click on elements and I can get content to appear on the screen. And that's all embedded in my discussion post. And then I close it out and maybe embed a YouTube video. So we're gonna look at what I did in order to transpose this, transform this content into something that's a little bit more visual. So let's look it through, and I'm gonna go ahead and edit this post so that we can see all of the elements. Now, in order to do this, I need to get into the HTML editor. I can't do all of these things, just in the rich content editor. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these up side by side. On one side, I see my published final iteration of the discussion post, and then on the right side, I have the code that I did to get this. So first thing we'll look at is how did I create that background color? And what I did is before I started my discussion post, I created a div and then I put some style in the div and the style that I have here is background dash color. And then I chose the color, which is this background color right here, a very light purple. And then you probably don't even notice it's very subtle, but the text isn't actually black text. It's a very dark purple text. And I have the color right here. In order to get those colors, I went on to coolers.co and just randomly selected some colors that I thought looked nice. Now I also put some padding. So the padding is 25 pixels, and that gives me a little bit of space from the top to the content and from the edges to the content, as well as the bottom. And in my case, I put a maximum width of 800 pixels. So all of these elements aren't spanning the entire width of the page. I just thought 800 is enough. Let's just keep it there. And in general, 800 is actually a good width if you're reading a lot of text, which discussion posts obviously are gonna be reading a lot of text. All right, next I have this section right here, this main statement, and I did that with a div as well. So this is the main statement header. And then I have a class separator. That's actually legacy. That's not actually doing anything. That's for my other instance of Canvas. And so I can delete that. But then I have border-round. And so that gives me the rounded corners right here instead of a straight edge. You can see in the padlet right here, that's a straight edge. And I could round those corners if I wanted to, but I just wanted the headers to be rounded. Next, I have a background color. And again, I put some padding. This time I put padding left and padding top and bottom of 10 pixels. Now it's aligned center and I can go ahead and take that out. In fact, and when I save that, then this will align to the left. And you can see on my other heading right here, I have 10 pixels from the top and the bottom, and I put that padding top 10 pixels, padding bottom 10 pixels, and then on the left, I put a little bit more than 10 pixels. So I put 25 pixels. And so that gives me a little bit of space so that the heading isn't coming right up against the text, which I think would look a little bit weird. And then I have the color here. The text here isn't white. It looks very light, but it's actually a very light purple. And so this is the color that I chose. And then I put the font size extra large, 
It could be 2x large, it could be large, it could be medium. Since it's a header, I thought extra large is good enough, I think. So below the header, I have two paragraphs of text, and you can see that text right here. But I also have this image that's floating to the right. And I chose this just on Unsplash right in Canvas. And so I added the image. And then once I chose the image, I put in some style. So the style is that I want it to float to the right of the text. And I want to have a margin on the left of 25 pixels, and then a margin on the top and a margin on the bottom of 15 pixels. So that just makes it so the words don't come right up against the image. It gives it a little bit of space and then also a little bit of space at the top and the bottom. And the bottom, we don't see it right now, but if the words were to wrap around underneath, I wouldn't want the words too close to the image. I want to give it just a little bit of space. I put the width of 250 pixels, and I just did that right in the rich content editor. And now I have another header, and I can see that header right here. It's exactly the same as the first header, except for the first header I did center it, and I just undid that, so when I save the page, it'll float to the left. And then all I did is change the words, so supporting argument. And then if I scroll down here, I have another body of text. And then I have my interactive element. And so this is code that's just copied and pasted right from the Padlet page. And if I go to Padlet, I can see all of the content here. I can add content by clicking on the timeline, or I can click this button down here or double click anywhere I want. And I can put links, images, pictures, I can write text, whatever I want. Once I have this completely done, then what I would do is go to share. And what I want to do is embed it in my blog or my website. In this case, it's Canvas. And they give you some embed code. And I'm just going to copy that embed code. And then I paste it right into Canvas, which is what I have right here. After that, I have some more text. And then I have another interaction, which is the ThingLink brain that I created. And so you can go on ThingLink. You can upload a picture or a video, even a 360 picture. You can edit it and put hotspots or interactions. And they could be videos that pop up, or text, or pictures. You can even do voiceover, or a podcast, whatever you want in there. And then once you have that ready to embed, then you'd click on the share button. And I'm going to copy all of this embed code. Once we hop back, then this is what I paste. So I'm going to take this iframe right here, and then I'd go ahead and paste that. And then I have some more text down here, and then I embedded a video. So once you find a video on YouTube that you like, then you can click the share button and you can find the embed code right there. I'm going to copy that. And then that's what I would paste right on the canvas page where I want it. So you go ahead and paste that as plain text. And then when I click save, then I can review the discussion posts. Again, you can see the difference is a regular discussion post is going to span the entire width of the page. And I'm saying I want it to span maybe 800 pixels. I think that's good enough. I want it to be a little bit more narrow just because it's easier to read a line of text on this 800 pixel format than it is to read an entire line of text on a large monitor. So for me, that would be ideal. And the elements I have on here is a background color. I have a header that's stylized with a colored heading text. I changed the color of the font. I inserted a picture, made it small, floated it to the right, gave it some space around the picture. And then I embedded an interaction, in this case through Padlet, as well as through ThingLink. And then I put in a video. So it's not terribly complex, but it does give it an edge. It's different than just having text on a white background. You want to give it a little bit of organization. So try and use headings as much as possible. But also you can add a little bit of creativity and flair. Add your personality to your discussion posts. A discussion post like this is probably going to ensure that, for one, if I'm a student, then more of my fellow students are going to read my posts, and that my teacher is going to take notice. And if you're a teacher, then you can do something interesting with your discussion post just to make your class more engaging and interesting for your students. So be creative, do some interesting things. If you like this particular discussion post, then I'll put the code to this on my website, howtocanvas.com. So make sure you jump over there, grab the code, and then start tinkering with it. Make it your own. Play around with the colors, make your own interactions, maybe embed unique content that you think is interesting, and do what you can to stand out. Until next time. Happy Digging and Morning!